Amen. I'll tell you what, why don't we stand to our feet if you're able to this morning or this afternoon, this evening, amen. Where whatever time zone you may be in while you're watching this, amen. We're going to get in one mind and one accord, and we're going to invite the presence of God here, and then we're just going to see what happens. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together as a body of believers. Precious Father, we come before you right now in the wonderful name of Jesus. We give you thanks for your goodness and mercy, which endureth forever. Father, we invite your presence here. Hallelujah. We ask you to move like you've never moved before, dear God. Stir every pot that's here today, dear God. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We lift up your name, and we're here to magnify you. For we ask this all by faith in the powerful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Why don't you shout it? Amen. Let's worship together tonight. Amen.
because of who you are I give you praise because of who you are I will lift my voice and say Lord I worship you because of who you are that sounds so beautiful sing it again because of who you are I give you glory because of who you are we give you praise because of who you are I give you praise because of who you are I will lift my voice and say Lord I worship you because of who you are and you are Jehovah Jireh my provider Jehovah Nisi Lord you reign in victory Jehovah Shiloh you're my Prince of Peace and I worship because of who you are let's sing it again because of who you are I give you such a sweet spirit in the house because of who you are I give you praise because of who you are I will lift my voice and say My provider, Jehovah PC, Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shiloh, you're my Prince of Peace, and I worship you because of who you are. My provider, Jehovah Nisi, Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom, my Prince of Peace, and I worship you because of who you are, Lord, you are Jehovah Jireh.
tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. What a good, good God we serve. Amen. I worship Him because of who He is. Why do you worship Him tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Why are you here tonight? Hallelujah. Why do you come here? We come to bring a, a sacrifice of praise before our God. Hallelujah. We come to learn about Him. Hallelujah. To draw closer to Him. This is our feeble way to get close to Him in our flesh. To come to His house. We're a guest in the, our Lord's house. Think about that today. We're in the house of the Lord tonight. Just think when you go to somebody's house and you're knocking on the door, you just you knock and you come in. You're invited in. You just don't barge in. You're invited in. He's got his doors open. He's invited us to be and sit in his presence tonight. Amen. When people come to your home, you, you usually shower them with gifts. You give them food. You give them drink. You show hospitality to them. You want them to feel comfortable. Amen. I hope you feel comfortable here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. You're in the presence of God. You're in a presence today that can change your life forever. You can come here tonight. I don't, it doesn't matter how you came into this house. You can leave a different way. It doesn't matter your beliefs or your unbeliefs tonight. God can shine a light in your path and in your heart tonight. Give us understanding. Show us where we need to be. Hallelujah. He does that for me every day, and I am grateful and thankful tonight. Amen. What a good God we serve. We're going to try to change the order of service, and we're going to pray for one another. We're going to flex our spiritual muscles today. Everybody got a spiritual muscle tonight? Amen. We're going to put the devil on the run. Hallelujah. Put him under our feet. Stomp his head a little bit. Hallelujah. Put him where he belongs tonight. And we're going to pray as a body of believers where two or three are gathered, amen, who's gathered in Jesus' name, amen. We got, we've got the quantum tonight where we got enough right here to run him out of town, amen. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to pray in one mind. So if you're here tonight, maybe you're sick and inflicted, and you want somebody, any, you've got a man of God here that will anoint you in the name of the Lord, amen. You don't have to leave broken and sick and inflicted tonight. You can leave here healed, healed tonight. So if you've got a need in your body, we're going to open up the altars and invite you to come. If you're here and you've got an unspoken request, why don't you signify that by the uplifting of your hands? Amen. Maybe you've got lost loved ones. Amen. Somebody that you know is in dire straits and needs God right now. We're serving a right now God. Hallelujah. He's able to touch the need right now. Because he knows that's all we have right is right now. Not promised anything. So we're going to pray. If you want prayer, come on up. Take a step of faith. And as they're coming, if you see someone coming up, ladies, if you see a, a lady coming up, why don't you come up and help your sister? Lay hands. Come up and lay hands on her. It's okay. You're, you, you're allowed to do that. If you're a believer tonight, you're allowed to come up and lay hands on the sick. We got, are we got any believers in the house tonight? Amen. It's Wednesday night. That's all right. We can still believe and, and, and pray, amen. We've got a few that's up here that wants prayer, that needs prayer, amen. Look at this. We're going to take a little bit of time and we're going to pray for one another, amen. If you're able to, why don't you come up? You see somebody up here, come up here and help us. Help your sister, help your brother today. Let's pray. Let's pray for one another. Precious Father, we come before you right now.
can return back to our seats. Uh, pastor caught me off guard today and asked me to do the offering. So it's okay, though, because God's our provider. Uh, I can think of plenty of times that you know I didn't want to give or I didn't ha think I had anything to give. So I didn't give, and I struggled. And then there's times that I didn't have anything to give that I thought, but I gave, and things worked out because he's our provider. So we have the old-fashioned way can give in the baskets or here at greater faith we make it convenient for you you can scan the code and pay online or give online so uh let's pray for your offering Lord, we thank you god we ask that you bless us all And it's moments like that that I wish I could sing. There's a song in the house, but there's not a voice to do it with. Praise God. Amen. Feels good in the house of the Lord tonight, doesn't it? Praise God. Man, I feel peace here tonight. I feel abiding peace here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. I did catch Luke off guard today. The Lord knew. And I just, you know, I talk to the Lord just like I talk to my friends sometimes. And I just said, Lord, I said, who do you want to do? Receive the offering tonight. And the Lord said, Luke. And I said, why Luke? He said, because he's been faithful. And he has seen me prove myself faithful to him. Praise God. Mm. Has he been faithful to anybody tonight? Praise God. Don't, don't worry, they already got the baskets. I'm not taking a second offering. I'm just saying, has he been faithful to anybody? Praise God. Hallelujah. It's a joy to give. It's a joy to give. Hallelujah. You know, I always ask God, and I'm taking my time, but I always ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to give? I was standing right there, and I said, Lord, what do you want me to give? He said, I want you to give $100 in the offering. And I said, all right. If that's what you want me to give, then that's what I'm going to give. You know, we don't give according to what our flesh says. But giving is an act of worship. And every time I give, I ought to ask the Lord, Lord, what would you have me to give tonight? Praise God. Amen. I'm not teaching about giving, so you can calm down. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pray with you, and then I'm going to let you be seated. But before I do that, we're going to do something a little different tonight, and we are going to dismiss all of our faith kids downstairs on a Wednesday night. Yeah, I know. You don't have to stand, sit up here and fall asleep. You can go downstairs and stay awake. Praise God. I'm sure you'll have much more fun down there. Adults, you have to stay. I'm sorry. And we don't have snacks either, so... Amen. Let's pray together. Jesus, we love you. Lord, we're so thankful to be in your house with your people tonight. God, I pray that your hand would be upon the remaining portion of this service. Lord, that you would anoint me to teach your word tonight, God. I pray your word would edify, that it would encourage, that it would exhort. God, that understanding would be open tonight, Lord, that healing and growth would be released in this service in Jesus' name. And let the church say amen. 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 This year is a 
a year of growth and healing, and we're going to continue on that topic tonight. You may be seated. Praise God. Praise God. I woke up at 4.30 this morning, not because I wanted to be awake. <laughs> I did not want to be awake. I wanted to go back to sleep. But the Lord did not allow me to go back to sleep. Have you ever had the Lord wake you up before? Yeah. Amen. And you just wonder if he keeps the same clock as you do, right? I woke up at 4.30 and I just I felt compelled to go out into the kitchen and I began to pray. And the Lord just began to talk to me about tonight. And these words just began to uh, pour into my spirit and onto this page. And so I'm going to share with you tonight what I believe the Lord has laid on my heart for greater faith. Is that all right? All right. 2024 is going to be a year of growth and healing. And I'll tell Brother God when you did really good. <laughs> As I have already shared with you, the Lord put this theme in my spirit to be a focal point for this church, His church this year. In addition to growth and healing, certain months we will narrow our focus on topics that support growth and healing. February is going to be a focus on the home month. We are going to look to the Word and learn how we can establish healthy homes, what the Word says about our homes, so we can further facilitate growth and healing in our lives. Our first major initiative this year in pursuing growth and healing has been, come on, somebody say it, tethered. This unified effort by the church is intended to help us put down major distractions time thieves, and shut out the world's voice so that we may become more in tune to God's voice by saturating our mind with his word. We are two weeks into this tethered initiative, and no doubt some of us have already, and I'm, don't lift your hands, <laughs> have already started slipping back into old habits of carrying our phone all the time, constantly checking social media, the news, and other technology distractions. I felt compelled this morning to encourage you that if you have started to waver from your initial effort, tonight is a great night to recommit to that effort. Get caught up on your reading. Start carrying that Bible with you again. Leave your phone on your desk or the counter or wherever and only use it when you need it and get tethered to the Word of God. Amen. How many of you have enjoyed this first two weeks of tethered? Praise God. Amen. How many of you notice a difference having engaged in this initiative in your life? Anybody? Awesome. Praise God. If you haven't already, please take time to share with us how this Tethered campaign has affected your life. You can go to our website or our Facebook page, and there's a link right there. Just click that thing that says Link Tree, and there's a link on there that you can click, and we want you to share your testimony about how Tethered has impacted your life because we plan to highlight some of these testimonies in the next few services, and we want to take time to share and celebrate how God's Word is impacting your life. Does that sound good? Tonight, I want to go a little further into our journey of growth and healing by examining some of the things that we can expect to happen when we start saturating our mind with the Word instead of the world. God's Word is designed to bring growth and healing in our life. I want you to go with me to Psalms chapter 107, verses 19 and 20. Psalm 107, verses 19 and 20. Man, you got that quick. Come on now. I didn't even give it to him beforehand. 
Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He sent his word and healed them. Mm. His word paves the way for healing and deliverance in our lives. Praise God. Hallelujah. His word leads the pilgrimage to promise in our journey with God. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to tell you that if you're going to get to where God is taking you, you can't do it without this. This will bring healing to your past, your present, and your future, and it will pave the way forward for you to grow into the promises of God in your life. Mm. There are some questions you ask people, and you already know the answer. You ever done that before? Ask somebody a question. And you, you're just doing it to lead them, right? I would propose that likely 99% of the time, if you ask someone if they want growth and healing, they would say, the problem starts with posturing our self-will in a place of authority to author our way forward into growth and healing. Mm. Ah. We all want growth and healing, mm. but what is going to tell us, teach us, and lead us into growth and healing? Mm. It never ceases to amaze me that the me that messed up, the me that made the mistake, the me that is lost without God is the same me that wants to mandate the way forward, malign godly authority, and manipulate the circumstances of my growth and healing. That's how our flesh works. It gets us in the mess and then it swears it knows its way out of the mess. <laughs> if I'm going to apprehend growth and healing in my life, there is a truth that I must reconcile right now. Mm. Hear me, greater faith, because this is the premise. This is, you know, when you line up to take a, to go, uh, to be in a race, you can tell me the races I've been in, right? What's it say right there at the beginning? Start. This is the starting line to growth and healing. It's a truth that we all must recognize and reconcile, and it is this. I can't trust my way. I can't trust my way. My way got me needing God. My way got me lost. My way got me messed up. My way got me turned around. I can't trust my way. And if I'm only going to do it my way, then I'm always going to be in need of growth and healing. Hallelujah. Jesus said in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Listen, saints, if you want to mess up your marriage, keep doing it your way. If you want your kids to walk away from church, keep doing it your way. If you want to be snared by the enemy, keep doing it your way. If you want your finances to be cursed, then just keep doing it your way. If you want to be outside of covering, keep doing it your way. Keep doing it according to your timing. Keep doing it according to the way you feel. Keep compromising with your flesh. And it won't belong before you're back to the beginning of your reset cycle. Mm. Wow. Too often, people come crying for help after the damage has been done. 
Please hear your pastor tonight. It's time to get in front of the problem. It's time to break out of the cycles and say to yourself, I'm done doing it my way. Mm. I want growth and healing, so I'm going to do it God's way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm doing it his way, even if I don't like it. I'm doing it his way, even if my kids don't like it. I'm doing it his way, even if my flesh doesn't like it. I'm doing it his way, even if my mind resists it. I'm doing it his way, even if it offends me. I'm doing it his way, even if it makes me countercultural. I'm doing it his way, even if no one else does. Why? Because he said, it's in red in your Bible, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So I can't do it my way. I have to do it God's way. He is the way to growth and healing in my life. Mm. Hallelujah. I want to remind you of some of the statistics we read together when we launched the Tethered Initiative. When someone reads the Bible and engages with his word in a meaningful way at least four times a week, which is the majority of days in your week, that person is 57% less likely to be involved with alcohol, 68% less likely to have sex outside of marriage, 61% less likely to view pornography, 74% less likely to gamble, and 57% less likely to engage in sinful habits. I'm doing it God's way. Well, pastor, what does that mean to consistently and meaningfully engage with the word of God the majority of my week? Well, I'll tell you what it doesn't mean. I don't know if anybody else here has a little touch of ADD, but I think I was baptized in it. And so what happens is, is I start reading this Bible and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's good. And then all of a sudden I'm thinking about 8,700 different things. And I'm like, I just read a page and a half, and I couldn't tell you what in the world I just read. Why? Because my, my mind went for a walk, even though my eyes were doing this. So you know what I got to do? I got to come back, and I got to lasso my focus. Now I got to bring it back. You know what I do? I read it again. It takes me so long to read the Bible, Brother TJ, because sometimes I got to read it again. And read it again. What am I doing? I'm training my focus. And then I read it. First, I make sure I'm focused. Mm. You know what the Bible says? Sister Linda, the Bible says that he will give you your daily bread. You know what that means? That means every single day. There is something in this book that will speak to you, that will feed you, that will minister to you, that will resonate in your spirit. And it's my job every single day, Brother Jim, to go to the table that he set a long time ago. And I need to eat until I find my daily bread. When I find a scripture that has spoken to me, when I find a passage Message that has ministered to me I have found my daily bread and I stay right there and I engage with that word I let that word permeate my spirit I let that word saturate my mind I read it a few times over and I let it get inside of me what have I done I have meaningfully engaged with the word of God mm. hallelujah I just feel to say this. I'm going to throw this in here for somebody. It's not enough just for you to listen to preaching. 
Listen, I love listening to preach. I love preaching. Not me preaching. I love preaching, period, right? I love it. We need it. It's edifying. It's powerful. It should be a part of your life, and I encourage you to listen to preaching. But you know what? When my kids were born, we only spoon-fed them for so long. And at some point, we, we said, you know what? You may not want to, and man, Hudson didn't want to. Whew. That boy was spoiled. But we got to the point where we said, you know what, Hudson? You're going to have to pick up that spoon, and you're going to have to feed yourself. Let me tell you something. If you want to stay an infant in the faith forever, then you will sit in a high chair spiritually like this, and you'll say, well, preach to me. Spoon feed me. No, listen, if you want growth, if you want growth, if you want growth, if you want growth, uh, you've got to learn to pick up this book uh, and find the passages for yourself. Come on. Hey, I feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, let me tell you something right now. When you're a new believer in Christ and you're just beginning to read the Bible for the first time, I challenge you. Do what I did. When I first started reading the Bible, I said, God, I don't know where to start. I need you to take me to a verse. Uh, and I would just open that book randomly and I'd start reading. Uh, and and it wouldn't be very long huh, before something on the page huh, would jump out and speak to me right where I am. Huh. Hey, friend, you don't have to be a theologian huh, to engage with the living word. Huh. If you take a step towards this book, this book will find you. It will speak to you. Huh, and it will minister to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Additionally, someone who truly engages and connects with God's word at least four times a week is 228% more likely to share their faith with others. Am I on out there? Okay. Just checking because Sunday morning there's going to be freshly printed business cards out there in the foyer. And man, if you've been tethered, you're 228% more likely to find somebody to give that church card to and say, hey, just want to invite you to church. Yeah. Mm, praise God. You're 231% more likely to disciple others. This is something I've been praying about. I said, God, we need discipleship at greater faith. We need, we need people to grow into a place where they feel confident to open this book with somebody else and say, let me show you the way. Mm, let me show you the way more perfectly. This is the way. Walk ye in it. A relationship with the word will build that confidence in you. And you are 407% more likely to memorize Scripture. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Greater Faith Apostolic Church, consistently and meaningfully engaging with the word of God, will be one of the greatest facilitators to growth and healing in your life. Huh. More than therapy, more than counseling, more than medicine, more than every substitute the world has offered and packaged and under-delivered on, the word will do what the world only claimed that it would do. Mm. This word brings growth and healing. Amen. Brother Godwin so eloquently expounded in his message how each of us is born into sin. We know that the wages of sin is death, meaning not only a literal death, but also a spiritual death. Sin is corrosive. You ever had, you ever went to start your car and that battery's been in there a long time and you pop the hood and you find all this corrosion on top? You're like, man, I've just been driving the car. I didn't even realize there was a problem 
But under the hood, something's been corroding. Something's been breaking down. That's how sin is. It's corrosive. Under the hood of your life, that sin just works away and begins to eat away at things underneath the surface. It eats away at the promises of God in our lives. It erodes the places and processes that God predetermined to be spaces and institutions of joy. Sin has woefully torn down marriage in our society. A bond that was created by God to be a source of strength, a source of multiplication, and a source of love. Sin has robbed the family quiver. And instead of precisely launched arrows, our children have sprung into sin, into dysfunction, into pain, into loneliness, into identity confusion, and self-medication. Sin has siphoned our finances by causing us to, like Demas, be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Vanity has robbed us of holiness. Carnality has marginalized our spiritual authority. Disrespect and rebellion has replaced submission and honor. Widows have been left to fend for themselves. Our elders are given no honor. Parental authority and in-the-home training has been replaced by institutional indoctrination. All of these things are products of sin and mankind saying, I know the way. I want my way. Don't tell me the way. When you say, I'm doing it my way, you are standing in direct defiance to the word of God and the character of God. God said, I am the way. What does that mean? That means there is no area of my life uh, that is not surrendered uh, to this biblical roadmap to promise and purpose in my life. Amen. The Apostle Peter gives us the first and most important step of growth and healing in Acts chapter 2 when he responds to the question, what must we do? Without hesitation, his first instruction was to repent. He said, repent and be baptized. Mm. Turn away and be Bury this sinful nature. Ah, that's what baptism is. Repentance is saying, I'm done doing it my way, and I'm going to bury that old carnal nature in a watery grave. And when I come up out of that water, I'm not doing it my way anymore. My flesh is not in charge anymore, but I'm trusting that God's going to fulfill his promise, fill me with his spirit, and from this day forward, his word and his spirit will be the compass in my life. Does it matter if you're a first time guest or if you've been on the pew for three generations? I'm preaching right now to every one of you. I'm not preaching to the person next to you or the person you think mm, needs to hear it. Mm, come on. I know I'm preaching strong for a Wednesday night, but I'm telling you, I didn't get up at 4.30 to deliver a watered-down word. God brought me to this pulpit tonight to bring you a strong word uh, because we, mm, hallelujah, we are moving forward together in Jesus' name. This word is for you. It's not for the person next to you or who you think needs to hear it. I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to you Brother TJ. I'm preaching to you, Brother Ben. I'm preaching to you, Brother Jim. I'm preaching to you, Brother Dwight. Come on, I'm preaching to you, Luke. I'm preaching to you, Wed. It's not for the person next to you. I'm preaching to you tonight. You need to make a choice. What way am I going to take? Is it my way or his way? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
If you are serious about growth and healing, you need to repent. Starting 2024, your heart's cry ought to be, God, I'm done doing things my way. I'm done thinking my way. I'm done exercising my will to get my way. I'm done pushing for my way. I'm done manipulating to get my way. I'm done resisting your way. And I'm done negotiating with my flesh. Mm, hallelujah. We all need to pray this prayer. Lord, I repent. I turn away from my way. And from this day forward, thy word, thy word is going to be a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hallelujah. Come on, can we just take a moment right now before we go any further in this service? And I just feel a call to repentance in this service here tonight. That if you're walking forward into growth and healing, you need to make a choice right here tonight. God, I'm done doing it my way. Lord, I surrender myself to you right now. God, I'm done being stubborn. God, I'm done championing my own opinions. God, I may not understand everything. God, but I'm done wrestling around with this flesh. God, and I'm willing to walk with you. I'm willing to hear from you. God, I'm willing to surrender to you. Lord, I repent, God, tonight. And I surrender to your way in my life. God, I want growth and healing. God, I desire growth and healing. God, I'm believing you for growth growth and healing. So I'm starting now, God, with a prayer of repentance tonight. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Lord, forgive me for my selfishness. Forgive me for my stubbornness. God, I lift my will up to you. I place it on this altar tonight, God, and I authorize you, Lord, to speak into every area of my heart, every area of my life. God, be the navigation for my soul. Let your word speak to me today in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Oh, yeah. Praise God. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27 tells us that Christ loved the church and gave gave himself for it. And then there's a semicolon. That semicolon connects these two thoughts together to tell us why he gave himself for it. Christ loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Mm. That he would create an opportunity, not an assurity, but an opportunity that we can be sanctified and cleansed by the washing of the word. That he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That's why Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. He looked down and said, I have a church and there's a sin problem that needs to be taken care of. So I'm going to create an opportunity. If they will engage with my word, this word will begin to clean up their life. It will begin to sanctify them. It will begin to teach them. It will be a minister of grace unto them. It will be a source of strength for them. Mm. Being in church doesn't clean us. Receiving and applying the word is what sanctifies and cleans our life. Why does he want his word to cleanse us? So he might present it to himself. I want growth and healing so I can be present 
with Jesus. Mm. Woo. <laughs> what do you mean, Pastor? I mean, he does not share company with sin. And if you want to be in his presence, you've got to authorize this, authorize this word to come into your life, Sister Sharon. You've got to open this book, Sister Sharon. You've got to say, God, I'm authorizing you to speak to me about every area of my life. God, everything I've ever been stubborn about, everything I've ever mm, ha, been hindering about, God, I'm allowing this word to step over a new threshold in my heart. God, and speak new things into my life. God, and authorize new activities in my home. God, to pave new ways in my patterns. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. Huh. James 5, 16 says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. I love that about greater faith. This church knows how to pray for one another. That ye may be Healed. There's that word again. That you may be healed. Ah. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Ben, if I come to you and I say, Ben, I got a problem. I got this issue in my life and I need you to pray for me. But you have not allowed the word to sanctify you Guess what? That will not be the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. It will be empty words huh, coming out of a man that does not have a relationship with the Word of God. Huh? But if I say, Dwight, huh, I need help. I got an area in my life huh, that needs healing. Huh? And Dwight said, Dwight's been in the presence of God. He's been, he's been in the Word of God. And he, he reaches out and he begins to pray. He says, I'm going to pray for you, Pastor. Guess what? That's going to be the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. And it's going to bring healing into my life. Why? Because he's been washed. Because he's been sanctified. Because he's got a relationship with the Word. Greater faith I have. And that was not an indictment on Ben. That was just an example. <laughs> I've served the Lord for a long time, but I still need healing. I've grown a lot. I thought about this a lot this morning. I've grown a lot the last few decades. There's been measurable growth in my life, but I got a lot of growing to do, Brother Carl. The word has cleaned up a lot of areas in my life, but I still got areas in my heart, places in my mind that I need the washing of the water by the word, the washing of the water by the word. I want this process to be released here at Greater Faith this year. That's the desire of the Lord. It's not to hurt you. It's not to harm you. It's to help you. And yes, sometimes it's hard. But hard is not harm. And hard is not intended to hurt. But it might hurt a little. But hard will help. And let me tell you what's hard. The Bible tells us the way of the transgressor is hard. So I challenge you Choose your heart. Which heart is it going to be? Am I going to buck up and say, you know what? Changing ain't easy. Changing is hard. But I'm going to choose this heart because it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Yeah, transgressing may be easy on the front end, but you'll be paying a price till the latter end. Choose your heart today. Praise God. Brother Hammond, would you come? Look at your neighbor say, it's 756. Praise God. Praise God. Would you stand with me?
If you're committed to growth and healing in 2024, I'm inviting you to lift your hands and your voices right now. And I just want you to begin to commit to this journey with God. This isn't for the person next to you. This is between you and the Lord. I want every eye closed in this building. My eyes are closed. Everybody's eyes should be closed. And I'll tell you when we're going to open our eyes together. But with every eye closed in this place, I want you right now to just talk to Jesus. Let the Lord know. Say, God, I'm committed. Lord, I want growth and healing in my life. I want it in every area of my life, in every part of my family, in every area of my home. I want growth and healing, God, in my marriage. I want growth and healing in my relationships. I want growth and healing in my friendships. I want growth and healing in my finances. I want growth and healing uh, on my job. I want growth and healing uh, in my church. I want growth and healing uh, in my city. And I want growth and healing in my life. Jesus name you may open your eyes Uh, 2nd Chronicles 7 and 14 says if my people which are called by my name look at your neighbor say that's us He's talking to us. He wasn't talking to the world when this was written. He was talking to believers He said if my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Everything about this passage implies that you can be a believer and do the exact opposite. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Greater faith, there's a lot of churches in this city. There are a lot of programs and ministries that come out of churches. Worthy causes. Feeding the homeless. Pregnancy crisis intervention. Helping the poor. Drug addiction programs. Divorce care grief counseling and on and on the list goes and all of these are good and they're worthy causes but all of them all of them are void if we do not heed the words of 2nd Chronicles 7 14 You can champion any cause you want to. But if you ignore 2 Chronicles 7.14, you're just putting band-aids on a wound that will never heal. It is not programs, community engagement, or worthy causes that will bring healing to our land. If my people, that's us, which are called by my name, that's us, shall humble themselves and pray. We must acknowledge our need for growth and healing and seek my face. Where are you going to find him? John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Where do you seek his face? You seek it right here. His face points the way. It tells you the direction. And when you see that direction, what do you got to do? turn turn from their wicked what's a wicked way it's any way that isn't his way we don't get to define what wicked is this does it for us if it's not God's way it's a wicked way Mm -hmm. the Bible says then will I hear from heaven an unwillingness to turn from what is displeasing to God will cause him to turn a deaf ear to our prayer. The Bible says he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Then will I hear from heaven and will heal their land. 
You serve a God that loves you unconditionally. But your relationship with him is not without condition. That's what we just read. Our city, this tri-state, is waiting on us to be sanctified and cleansed by the washing of the water by the word so healing can flow in this city. Listen, it would have been easy to show up here and say, man, we're going to feed the homeless every Thursday. We're going to minister to this need and that need. We're immediately going to launch an addiction recovery program. Let me tell you something. While all those are good and necessary and things I want this church to be involved in, all of them are void if we don't get the root system right first. Because, Brother TJ, when I hand somebody that bag of groceries... It needs to come with anointing and truth that can change their life. When I'm sitting there talking to an addict, hallelujah, they need to feel something that resonates in their spirit that causes them to believe I don't have to be this way forever. There really is deliverance and hope for my future. Healing must flow from those ministries. A church's, my resistance to obedience. Point your finger at yourself. Say, my resistance. My resistance to obedience will cost me growth and healing. A church's resistance. Please don't miss this. I know the kids are walking in, but hear this. I'm almost done. A church's resistance to turning from their wicked ways will cost them their city. And I refuse, Brother TJ, to be just another building with a cross here. This is going to be a place where a river of healing flows. Greater faith. Growth and healing is not just for us. It's for our city. They are waiting on us. They're waiting on us. Let's turn so they can heal. Let's turn so they can heal. If you receive that word tonight, would you just lift your hands right where you are? Lift your voices and let's pray together right now. Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the challenge of your word tonight. God, I feel the weight of this word in the atmosphere here tonight, God. I feel it weighing heavy, God, on hearts and minds in this room right now. God, let the gravity and the reality, oh God, of what we have stepped into as a church, God, let it come to us right now. God, let the realization, God, that my actions, my decisions, my willingness, God, to humble myself and pray and seek my face and turn from my wicked ways, Lord God, it not only determines my growth in healing, God, but it initiates and predicates the growth and healing in our city. God, this is a church that believes in regional revival. God, this is a church that believes that we can have a book of Acts revival in this region and turn this city upside down. God, I pray tonight Lord, that your voice would speak. God, that your word would minister. Lord, that the challenge would be accepted and we would walk forth from this place committed to growth and healing in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, would you just take somebody by the hand? Just pray for somebody near you right now. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, I want you to begin to pray growth and healing for the person next to you. Don't pray for yourself right now. Just pray.